Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines, Pittsburgh. In today's episode, we'll be covering a lot of ground in the city of Pittsburgh with builds like Phipps Conservatory and detailing out Shenley Park, including this really interesting intersection that I'm showing off right now. I'll also be detailing out Carnegie Mellon University near Shadyside. Before we do all of that, I'm actually going to be heading back to the Strip District, this really dense and walkable neighborhood close to downtown. And for the first half of the episode, we're just going to be filling out this massive hole that's been left to finish near the city. So I really hope you enjoy this special double feature episode that we have today. So as I mentioned in the intro, the entire first half of today's episode will be covering the rest of the Strip District. And it's because I really couldn't bring myself to skip over this really interesting neighborhood close to downtown Pittsburgh. It's extremely dense and it has this really great urban fabric with a lot of historical buildings, renovated factories, along with many new office developments for some of the new tech businesses moving to the city of Pittsburgh. You'll also notice some new residential developments along Penn Avenue and the waterfront in this neighborhood, especially as you get closer towards the downtown of the city. You'll notice that luxury apartments and condos are becoming more common to see as this neighborhood goes through some of the transitions of revitalization. Now, another reason why I wanted to revisit this neighborhood in particular is because I think there is a very strong argument to be made for some improvements to the transit in this neighborhood. And if you've been watching along with my series on YouTube here, you'll know that I'm recreating the city of Pittsburgh and city skylines in order to introduce some urbanism and city planning changes to try to revitalize the city for the future. My plan, of course, is to start with some of the projects included in the Next Transit and PRT's 25-year transit plan. And once I have some of those projects completed from the Next Transit 25-year plan, my next step is to start introducing some changes of my own. One of the changes that I'm most excited about making is introducing light rail to the neighborhood of the Strip District. I think that Penn Avenue in particular would be the perfect place to see a tram and bike corridor through this neighborhood. This future tram line could even be expanded onwards to the neighborhoods of Lawrenceville via Butler Street, as well as East Liberty, Shadyside, Bakery Square, and even connect upwards with the MLK East Busway via Penn Avenue. But yeah, definitely let me know what you think in the comments down below about some of these changes I'm proposing here. I'm really excited to start getting into the revitalization stage of the project, and it's really what brought me to starting these cities in the first place. So if you're interested in following along with some of these changes as I start to transform and revitalize these cities, make sure to subscribe down below. I think we just have about one or two more episodes left before the whole series is complete at least for the recreation stage of the project. The neighborhoods I have left to finish right now at this point are East Liberty, Shadyside, and Oakland. And I hope to tackle these in one or two episodes, so really excited to start getting into the revitalization stages and hope you enjoy the content to come. In a couple of my past videos, I've expressed my goal of trying to complete the city of Pittsburgh before City Skylines 2 comes out. And if you're watching this at the time of release, City Skylines 2 comes out in about three or four days. So obviously I don't think that goal is achievable anymore, but I wanted to let everyone know, all of my viewers, that I think at this point I will be sticking with City Skylines 1 to continue my projects in Pittsburgh and Rochester for the time being. I really have a strong attachment to these projects and I want to see them out to the finish. And personally, I think that City Skylines 1 has a lot of legs left to it and a lot of room to improve and grow still, even with the sequel coming out. 
and I think that there will be always time for City Skylines 2 in the future, once these cities are more complete. Now, here's a fun intersection that I wanted to quickly cover in the video. This is the 31st Street Bridge as it intersects with Penn Avenue in the Strip District. And this one is interesting because Penn Avenue is a two lane each way road going towards Lawrenceville. And at this intersection, it becomes a one way road towards downtown. And then of course, you also have the 31st Street Bridge coming to intersect with this and an alleyway on each side. So. It was a little bit of work in node controller, just messing with the offsets of the alleyways to get everything cleanly into one node here. And then of course, intersection marking tool completes all the finishing details. If you remember earlier in the video, I mentioned that I would be working on some of these new Riverside apartment and condo developments, as well as some of the new tech companies building offices in this area. And to start off, here is the Yards at Three Crossings, one of the many new apartment buildings in the Strip District. Uh, these new luxury condos slash apartments you can find right on the Allegheny River side here. And they actually got some really great trail access as well, all the way to the point and around the downtown of the city. You'll see a lot of these new developments popping up. And as I start to work on the offices nearby, it's kind of interesting to see the type of companies that are coming into Pittsburgh. You have this city that historically was very involved in heavy industry, like creating steel and the steel mills around Pittsburgh. And it's quickly changing that landscape to become more of a tech and robotics hub. And you'll see this push coming a lot from uh, the university that I'll be covering later in today's video called Carnegie Mellon University. There's also companies leading the way like Uber and Argo AI, which invested in the city of Pittsburgh and brought alongside with them a lot of these new tech companies coming to the city. Just down the street along the riverfront, you have another new apartment here, and this one's a bit different because this is not a new build. This is actually a revitalization of the old Armstrong Cork factory. Now they renovated this factory into lofts, but it's a cool way to keep some of the neighborhood history and character 
while also converting uses to something more relevant and useful to what the city needs today. I'm a pretty big fan of how this build turned out in game, and to capture the look here, I'm using a few of these New York high rise apartments by Smiley's and a few mill assets that I haven't gotten a chance to use yet. Combine that in with the smokestack and you pretty much got the look of this old 1900s factory here. And now it's time to cover another one of Pittsburgh's famous historic landmarks. I'm going to do my best to not completely butcher the name here, but this is St. Stanislaus Koska Church. And it sits here right on the intersection of Smallman Street and 21st Street. In order to try to recreate this historic landmark, what I'm doing is I'm going to take St. Mary's Cathedral from Rochester, New York, and I'm actually going to duplicate it and mirror the object so that I can get that dual spire look that the church has in Pittsburgh. After a quick color change and adding some gold accents, you've kind of got the look of the church that you see in Pittsburgh here. One final detail for this part of the neighborhood, I couldn't forget these old disused rail tracks. I thought this was such a cool feature of the neighborhood when I visited. We've got these railroad tracks that span the entirety of the Strip District on the aptly named Railroad Street. So I just take some of these cargo rail decals and the easiest way I could figure out to replicate the look of these is just laying them out using the 
prop line tool across the street. But before we continue on any further with today's build, I want to introduce a sponsor of today's video. Now, if you're a gaming enthusiast, or if you're into sandbox, survival, or simulation games like City Skylines, this is a newsletter that I highly recommend checking out. Introducing Nero Gaming, your passport to the gaming world's finest adventures. We all know that life can get busy sometimes, and it's tough to figure out which games are worth your precious time. But worry not! Twice a week, the Nero Gaming newsletter drops into your inbox with a bite-sized gaming feast. This newsletter covers the hottest new games, highlights some must-have mods, showcases exciting downloadable content, and reveals the latest gaming deals, all in a quick and easy 5-minute read. But don't just take my word for it, here's what fellow gamers have to say. Nero Games is more than just a gaming newsletter. Delve into the world of gaming tech. Discover fascinating stories like how AI is revolutionizing open world games with better NPCs. It's really gaming innovation at its finest. Are you ready to level up your gaming experience? Signing up is a breeze. Just visit Nero Gaming and enter your email and you're in. And the best part? All this is completely free. Join Nero Gaming now with the link in description below and start gaming smarter, not harder. Getting back to the build now, this is a detailed build that I actually had a lot of fun working on. This is the kind of urban format or footprint of an Audi dealership. And this variant you'll notice is a lot more compact than your typical car dealership. You know, normally you have these really large parking lots surrounding dealerships showing off all of their inventory. But since this Audi dealership is so close to downtown Pittsburgh, it's got kind of this compact and urban design to it where you'll actually see that there's this uh, multi-level parking garage next door which actually houses all of their car inventory and I thought it was a pretty cool build and I really enjoy how it turned out in the end um, making this custom parking garage with a couple ploppable asphalt surfaces and a few walls. After that, I just go into Find It and I search up Audi to see all the different Audi car assets that I have and kind of just go through the random selection tool here and place them down in the garage. I try to sort them out by model too, because I guess normally um, when you see dealerships like this, they usually have each model kind of separated out. You'll have a bunch of different cars in one section and then another section you'll see a different model of car so i tried to replicate that a bit here
If you've watched prior episodes of my Pittsburgh and Rochester series, you'll know that one of my favorite things to do in this game is take assets and put them into real life locations. Here, we've got the Weigel Whiskey Distillery made by asset creator Yinzer. And in real life, this sits at the corner of 24th Street and Smallman Street. I'm a big fan of showcasing these Pittsburgh assets um, created on the workshop, especially these that were made before I even started this project. It's just so cool to be able to recognize these really amazing creators that make everything here possible. It's just awesome when you get these actual Pittsburgh assets and are able to place them in the city. For this next portion of the build, I really sped up this footage because um, I'm just filling in this really massive hole left in the middle of the strip district. I'm going to include some real life footage here as well to kind of supplement what I'm doing here, but you can imagine that this area is just a lot of these abandoned warehouses and factories. You have a lot of industry here and the commercial and shopping that you see in the other side of the strip district is more absent in this area as you get further away from downtown and towards Lawrenceville. Now here's some footage I took from on the ground when I visited this neighborhood and you can see it's got these vibrant elements to it. It's got some industry and some garages like um, mechanic shops, but you also have a little bit of urban decay. You've got some older factories that have been left in a state of disrepair and, and are now just prime examples for redevelopment. And with that, we now have the entire strip district complete. So let's hop into some detailing now. The first thing I'm doing to detail the strip district and what I think is going to make the most difference here in probably the easiest way is using intersection marking tool to really detail out Penn Avenue. 
I'm using some of the new features of Intersection Marking Tool to add some power lines and realistic power poles to the side of the street. And along with that, I'm also using some of the new random and rotation features to be able to add some randomized potholes to the street. You can actually set the parameters of the size, rotation, and even offset them randomly. So it's an easy solution if you want to have more realistic, like beat up Midwest streets. Potholes are a great detail to add to add a little bit more of that realism factor to your city. Now that Penn Ave is detailed, there's another part of the Strip District that I was really excited to come back and detail a bit further. This is known as the Terminal, and these shops you see here are part of a converted fruit auction and sales warehouse. This really beautiful 1926 modern renovation has brought a lot of new business investments and a lot of life to the neighborhood. It's also just an absolutely massive building. Um, as you can see, it spans five blocks in the Strip District, and it's so large that it even has its own pedestrian pathways through the building. I want to give a big shout out to Abrams in the Discord for actually teaching me a trick to make my life so much easier making these signs for the terminal. I'm going in PO and I'm not really worrying about what letters I write out here. I'm just going to use the replace by copy tool and procedural objects. So all I have to really worry about is the spacing of the letters and there's a little bit of kerning issues that I deal with later, but it works actually really well for placing down these lettered signs for the area. But once again, I just want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Bungalow Man for creating this terminal asset. It really turned out amazing and I was so happy to be able to detail it out a bit more here. But once again, I just want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the asset creator Bungalow Man for creating this terminal building asset. It's really amazing to be able to detail this and really bring it to life in city skyline. So I wanted to give this building a moment to shine once more and I include a bunch of cinematics to show off here in a moment of this terminal building. And I also include a bunch of comparison footage to my many visits to this area in Pittsburgh. So I hope you enjoy. And of course, I could not include the original Permanti Bros in the Strip District, so I added a few extra details here, and I hope you enjoy this as well.
Now let's shift gears a bit and go to a completely different part of the city to do a completely different type of build. Now this is going to be a lot more green than the strip district was, but let's start off with detailing Shenley Park by covering Bob O'Connor Golf Course. And I was kind of excited about this build just because it's very different from what I normally do and I've never actually gotten a chance to build a golf course in City Skylines before. I go for the lower detail route here, just using some assets and a few props, but yeah, I'm not sure if I'm the biggest fan of golf courses as an urban land use. My thoughts on them are kind of mixed because they do offer some good green space area near downtown, but it's also an amenity that you have to pay to participate in. In general, I'm more of a fan of urban parks than urban golf courses. And I say this as someone who occasionally likes to golf myself, but I definitely recommend checking out City Nerd's video on the topic. He goes into it a lot more in detail and provides some of his urban expertise on the topic. So definitely recommend checking out that video if you want to learn more. Now here's one view that I've been really excited to complete ever since I started this Pittsburgh project. In front of you you have everything from Shenley Park all the way to downtown complete and even the backdrop of the South Hill is completing everything. Once I am able to finish Oakland and University of Pittsburgh campus I'm really excited to see how this view will look. Not too far away from that overlook and also in Shenley Park, this is where Boulevard of the Allies meets up with Panther Hollow Road and it creates this intersection here that's really interesting in my opinion so I wanted to put a little bit of extra detail into it. You've got Panther Hollow Road just curving over itself here and it's kind of a complex intersection for what's not really considered like highway roads. These are somewhat main roads going through the city, but it's a bit funny to see just how overbuilt and intricate this intersection is for what's essentially just a couple of boulevards. Either way, it looks great with how it fits into the terrain here in this little valley, really using the terrain to its advantage in this intersection.
Shenley Park wouldn't be complete without its various hiking trails, so I'm going to be completing a few of them here in Panther Hollow. These trails here connect around Panther Hollow Lake in Shenley Park and offer some really good greenery and nature within the city of Pittsburgh. I actually got a chance to visit this park in person and while I don't have any videos of it to show you, I can say that you really don't feel like you're in a city at all when you're in this park and it's a really great green space amenity for the residents of Pittsburgh. Up next, we're going to be building Carnegie Mellon University. This university is known for its computer science and drama departments and is also considered one of the top universities in the country. With this campus build, I wanted to create a university as realistic and true to life as possible while also keeping it fully functional as an in-game university campus. This will act as the second largest university campus in the build behind the University of Pittsburgh and ultimately, I would like them both to become five-star universities. In order to do this, I did have to sacrifice a bit of realism by using the trade school university assets, but luckily they looked somewhat similar to the buildings you would find at CMU. It's far from a perfect build, but in this case I chose function over form. I'm using a lot of offices and modern buildings to try to represent the different departments and schools within the college. But even with a lot of help from PO, I have to admit it was a difficult build to pull off. I think this is now definitely the most challenging thing I've tried to recreate in this city. And a good part of that is the steep terrain around campus, which offered a lot of unique challenges of its own and created some interesting viewpoints as well.
Now let's head over to the main quad of Carnegie Mellon University, also known as the Cut. We're going to be adding a few additional details here that will really bring this university to life. First, I'm going to be taking some of these signpost flag assets and I'm going to be applying a new texture to them and procedural objects to give them a Carnegie Mellon University design. This is just something that I found off Google Images, so not entirely sure if it's accurate or not for right now at the university, but I'm sure at some point they had flags that looked like this. Next up here, we've got an interesting outdoor sculpture called Walking to the Sky by Jonathan Borofsky. This is actually a copy of an original sculpture that used to be outside the Rockefeller Center in New York before it was moved to Dallas in 2005. And finally, for another small detail on Carnegie Mellon campus, we're adding the fence. And the fence is a longtime CMU tradition. It's just a fence on the CMU campus and it gets painted over with messages repeatedly from different groups and organizations on campus. And you'll see chairs from people guarding it from other people painting it. But a fun fact about this fence is it was actually painted so much that it collapsed in 1993 under the weight of its own paint. And now we've got one last and final build for today's episode. This is Phipps Conservatory, and this is right at the edge of Shenley Park, close to central Oakland here. Phipps Conservatory is a botanical gardens and historic landmark of Pittsburgh, being founded back in 1893 as a gift from Henry Phipps to the city of Pittsburgh. A fun fact about this really amazing botanical garden you have here in Pittsburgh is it's actually one of the greenest facilities in the entire world. Every bit of energy that this building uses is produced by itself. So it's actually designed to be as environmentally sustainable as possible. In order to build this, I had to get a little bit creative. Um, so there's no real large greenhouses in the game except from the Industries DLC. So I make this a kind of makeshift farming industry here and place down the main farming building so that I have access to the additional props and building plots. And then I just place down a fruit field which I convert to one of these nice greenhouses. And it works pretty well to capture the general look and feel of what this botanical gardens look like in real life. But that's it for today's build, and if you made it to the end of the video, I just want to give a big thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and make sure to stick around for the final cinematics, because we've got some off-camera stuff that you're not going to want to miss. 
Like always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like down below. And I want to give a big shout out and thank you to my supporters on Patreon as well for making everything here possible. And thank you once again for watching. This has been City Skylines, Pittsburgh. Thank you.